So guys, once again, if you can, please subscribe to the channel and please hit the like button on this video. So guys, what is the world coming to? I mean, over the last three or four years, I've done thousands and thousands of stories coming out from the streets of the UK, but it just seems to be getting crazier and crazier. So check this one out. A man who battered his aunt's partner to death just for likes on social media has been jailed for life. Declan O'Donnell, who's 24, repeatedly kicked, punched and stamped on a 63-year-old Paul Cox during a two-hour rampage where he was live streaming it on social media. Police were called when he uploaded harrowing footage of the brutal attack on Facebook and Instagram on February the 10th last year. A court heard how his followers pleaded with him to end the attack with one writing, Stop, you're killing him. Mr Cox was left with multiple fractures and internal bleeding despite O'Donnell's aunt, who was in the property at the time, also begging him to stop. Emergency crews arrived at the flat in Mansfield Road and took Mr Cox to Nottingham's Queen Medical Centre where he died nine days later. O'Donnell admitted manslaughter but pleaded not guilty to murder on the grounds of diminished responsibility. However, he was found guilty of murder following a 13-day trial at Nottingham Crown Court and was jailed for life to serve a minimum of 23 years. Judge James Sampson accepted he had been suffering from a mental disorder but it did not absolve him from the attack which he described as brutal and grotesque. The judge said you punched him so hard that you damaged your own hand. With that punch you knocked him out and the injury to your hand angered you even more. For the next almost two hours you subjected this defenceless and semi-conscious man to a relentless and humiliating assault. Throughout the attack you filmed him and he lay there bloodied, beaten and distressed on the floor. Words do not do justice to the horror of the images the jury had to see. During the trial, the jurors viewed the disturbing footage of Mr Cox drifting in and out of consciousness, having repeatedly been attacked by O'Donnell. The attack left him with a catalogue of injuries including a fractured skull, a broken spine, a broken jaw, wound to the right-hand side of his head and abdominal bleeding. When police arrived, O'Donnell was uncooperative and threatened officers with a knife before being arrested. Detectives examined the footage in which O'Donnell could be heard blaming Mr Cox for his mother's death, which was related to alcohol abuse. Police officers arrived at the address where O'Donnell answered the door but tried to blag his way out of the situation. He redirected police to another address delaying medical attention Mr Cox urgently required. They returned to the crime scene were forced to restrain O'Donnell who was an alcoholic who had drunk 10 pints of beer, amongst other booze. Mr Cox was found covered in blood and unable to speak, having suffered 25 fractures to his body, a crushed esophagus and blunt force injuries to his spine and brain. The victim's family were pictured with the framed photo outside of court, saying that he was a fun-loving guy, they said in a joint statement. We wish to thank the police and the legal team in helping us achieve justice for Paul. We are pleased with the outcome but as a family we are so saddened at the thought of how many lives this has destroyed. Nothing can bring our Paul back and although it does not make what has happened any easier to deal with we believe that this was truly the right result. For our family the past 15 months have been the most difficult time of our lives and now that is over we can finally focus on grieving for Paul. Our thoughts are with everyone that has been impacted with what Declan O'Donnell did that night. Detective Inspector Melanie Crutcher of Nottinghamshire Police said, This was a truly horrifying attack, almost defying belief in its brutality and utter senselessness nature. Not only was Paul Beach unconscious over a prolonged period of time, O'Donnell was lucid enough to live stream the attack on his mobile phone, showing no mercy throughout. It was a sadistic attack, and by refusing to accept responsibility for his horrendous actions, O'Donnell subjected Paul's loved ones to further pain by taking the case to trial, where the footage had to be replayed in open court. Today's sentence will not bring Paul back but it does mean that O'Donnell will spend a considerable part of his life behind bars and I hope this gives his family some comfort. I'd also like to thank the jury members for the professionalism they have shown having to sit and watch the attack clip by clip. So O'Donnell has so far served 15 months in custody meaning he will not be eligible for parole for another 21 years and 272 days. Guys, absolute madness. Like, Again, how can people do this? What is going on? Guys, I'm telling you the country's gone to pots now let's put it this way over the last three four years i've reported on thousands of stories that have occurred three four thousand stories 
Now, out of those stories, in the mainstream media, you've probably seen around 5% of those stories being reported. 95% of those I've reported on, I've never been on your BBC News, ITV News, Sky News and all that. Now, the amount of violent crime that I'm seeing happening on the streets of the UK, I'm only probably only able to report on 1-2% of those stories. The rest go unreported. To put all that into context, I'm telling you guys, we are living in a war zone. Absolute madness, guys. I just want to say rest in peace, Paul Cox, and my condolences go out to your family. In a news story coming from Suffolk Ways, a man who murdered his wife and their 12-year-old daughter was described as a monster by the woman's family as he was jailed for life with a minimum term of 40 years. Peter Nash is 47, suffocated. Jillian Nash was 43 and stabbed his autistic daughter, who was 12 years old, at their home in Great Wadling Field in Suffolk on September the 8th after discovering his wife had started an affair with a colleague. When police burst into the home after concerns were raised over the mother and daughter, they discovered Jillian's dead body on the floor in the living room, the daughter's body under a bloody sheet in the bedroom and Nash furiously stabbing himself. Jilu had been suffocated and had a t-shirt stuffed in her mouth and the daughter died from a stab wound to her abdomen. Police had to taser Nash who had knifed himself 22 times and tried to gas himself to death. A family member of Mrs Nash was in court and called the killer evil beyond belief and a living human monster before adding he took life like there were toys in their hands. So Nash had knifed himself in the chest multiple times and tried to gas himself, as I said, and police had to taser him and he was taken to hospital with 22 stab wounds. He was found guilty of murder following an early trial at Ipswich Crown Court of their murders. Mr Justice Edwards Murray sentenced Nash yesterday to life in prison set in the minimum term as 40 years, which he must serve before he can be considered for release. A judge told the defendant, even if you live a long life, there is a strong possibility, given your current age, that you will die in prison. He said Nash attempted to justify these murders with relation to a deeply flawed set of beliefs about the law that you've got from internet searches. He said the defendant had showed no remorse for the killing. So the prosecutor, David Joss Casey, said the defendant murdered his wife and daughter either late on September the 7th or early September the 8th last year. Mrs Nash's mother, who was also the daughter's grandmother, fought back tears when she was reading her victim impact statements in court. She described her daughter as a brilliant mum with a beautiful smile and a positive attitude towards life. She always did the best by her beautiful daughter. She said that losing my girls was like losing one's breath. She described Nash, as I said, like a human monster. So Nash, who represented himself in court, was dismissive of the victim impact statements read in court, saying from the doc, it's BS and I knew them better. He added, it was not premeditated, it was already predetermined. So it's heard in court that his wife was preparing to leave him and the prosecutor, David Joss KC, said Nash had calmly and chillingly admitted his killings and tried to justify it as a punishment for his wife wanting to leave him while sickingly claiming that his daughter was his property that he could dispose of. Nash, as I said, represented himself, claimed the judicial system did not apply to him and compared courts to casinos where the house always wins. But a jury just took over two hours to unanimously convict him at Ipswich Crown Court. So guys, I just want to say rest in peace to the victims and my condolences go out to their family. It's your boy GC. Keep it locked, keep it real.